So I needed to get a dub mix of the track Feel That. This is a track that you've seen on a few videos recently. I did a behind the scenes on the original mix and it was the one with the keyboard solo and everything on it. Now this dub is something that I needed to kind of go a bit darker, a bit deeper. And so I bounced all the elements out, I brought them through into a new Ableton Live project and I started work on it in my lunch break. So this is called the Lunch Break Dub, all right? So I'm sticking with the name, it's, uh, it's working for me. So let's just take a little tour and um, get it playing. The elements in this, um, I've basically got a drum rack with some sounds on it. And um, these are samples. You can see the kit, a couple of elements, the kick, open hat, clap. Clap's got a nice splash of reverb on it. You can see that down here. In terms of other elements, um, a clap here that was bounced from the original. Um, a little kind of rim shot snare. Let me just show you the pattern so you get a sense of uh, what's going down with that. There we go. Yeah, I did do a little preview video of this actually. I uploaded it so I had some questions about the bass. Um, I'm still not 100% on the mix down at the moment. Um, I haven't played it out on speakers just yet. Um, let's come and take a look at the bass. Now this is a real, a real classic kind of deep house bass. Very similar to the bass sort of sounds that you get um, on some Kerry Chandler tracks. If you're a Logic user, this is the sort of sound you get out of the EFM, but I actually create this sound. Let me show you what the settings are. It's quite a complicated little chain here, um, but that's all related around the actual um, the beats as well. So you can see some side chain stuff going on. It's a little bit rough and ready, but I don't mind. I'm, I'm all right with that. So let me show you the bass. Um, Let's show you what's going on with this. So take a look down here, the operator. That's just literally one, let me just, I tell you what, right, it's driving me mad. I'm taking the uh, compressors off for the moment, all right? So that's the original sound, all right? And um, that's just like a sub, it's like a sine wave. And this is set up in the FM mode. You see the algorithm down here. So this is literally, a proper proper FM sound going down so I've got the second oscillator look hear the difference it makes so it's that nice kind of pluckiness on the front so what I'm going to do just going to recreate the sound for you so you get a sense of um, what's happening with that and uh, I've forgotten how to make a new track without doing the the menu what is it is it command and M <laughs> no no uh, command and oh damn do you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take it out of full screen mode this is my platform schizophrenia coming through again. So what is it? Insert MIDI track. Oh, okay. Anyway, so look, ignore uh, my floundering around here. I'm going to take it back into full screen. Um, it's clearer to see what's going down. So we're going to load up an instrument. We're going to go for operator. Right, so here we go. So operator is here. I'm going to bring the MIDI down. So we've got something to go on. Let's copy it down so we can get a little bit of a, a journey through this. And... Uh, Let's have a listen. So that's what I started off with. So sine wave, okay? Now, um, as you saw, what I did was I brought the second oscillator up in level, but it doesn't sound anything like it at the moment. Just gonna bring it up to amplify that. So what I did to create that pluckiness was I took the envelope on oscillator two, so this is just on oscillator two. I brought it down like this. So it's starting to get that shape, you know? Take that up to course two, so I take it up higher. Just playing around with that now. I can't remember the, the precise settings. It took me a bit of time to get what I wanted. So I'm gonna jump over there and take a look. So the second one, so basically, let me just check out the time here. So 4.04, I've got my screen uh, increased to 1080p using this application and even though you guys can see it clear I can see it, it's really messy to be honest um, it's hard work but I think that's 404 milliseconds on the uh, decay there um, let me bring this down yeah so somewhere like that there we go they're sounding much more like it really quick and easy to make this one isn't it you know it's a real classic old school kind of deep house bass sound and um, you know the level here 
of the second oscillator brings out that FM sound. So if you don't want it to be as plucky, just take the level down. See like that, it's almost like adding a low pass filter, but we're not, there's no filtering going on here. So if you want it more plucky, just increase the level. That's a great thing about FM and the operator synth. So that's just a little look at that. And um, let's carry on then, right? So with the bass, I'm gonna turn these back on. These compressors, one of them's being used just to sort the level out. The next one's a sidechain ducking and then multiband because I felt I needed a little bit more kind of control over the sound. It, it felt a little bit wild. So let's have a listen. So some effects in the background going on. Um, I'm gonna take it up to here somewhere. And this is where the, uh, the vocal kind of dubby vocal effect from the original tune is being looped. That's over here. So I just really bounced it out and I just got that looping. I cut and pasted that together. And uh, once again, the joint's a little bit ragged, but it's cool. In the context of a dub like this, things don't have to be too pristine. So we've got the, uh, the electric piano on the rise here. So that's the, the low pass filter. You've got that here. See that's coming up. Flanger to add the movement to the sound. It's quite a big chain here. Um, some EQ. Sometimes things get messy for me, you know. Um, I just throw things in and uh, if it sounds good, it is good. Um, so there's a reverb here. I ended up not using that. I was originally using it with some automation. So there's the keys coming up and there's DJ style. So it's kind of cutting, uh, just like a DJ crossfader sort of uh, kind of vibe. I really like that sort of thing. Let's go back. So this is kind of like my intro. So let me go into the first breakdown. So very typical for me, just stripped down and then some kind of percussive thing coming in after four bars onto the next eight section we're building up. Listening back at the moment, I'm feeling the bass is maybe slightly too loud. Ah, and there's that vocal from the original track. Um, so this is kind of falling down in pitch. And uh, what did I do here? I think I did a envelope on here. So I'm gonna to go to clip and I'm gonna drop it down. So yeah, transposing it down. So moving down in pitch over time using a clip envelope. You saw there all that kind of trippy uh, madness in the breakdown, snare fill to signify the next section coming in. And then we're pretty much rolling um, until we get a little bit further down. So this piano is from the original, but just cut up and triggered. You heard there, there was like a, a tambourine that comes in here. I mean, this is really just a, a kind of simple DJ tune. It's just rolling and uh, designed to be in the mix. And uh, so that keeps progressing and, and really stripping it down with the kick and the keys. There's a real nice grainy texture on that kick that I really like. So stripping things right back. Very, very typical here. Really, just kind of standard really. Eight bar section gradually increasing in intensity as you go along. And then there's really that whole repeat of what happened before. Trying 
to think to myself there is a little bit too kind of hot going into the limiter um well not too hot it is actually too hot going into the limiter um but it was basically reducing the gain too much still in the mix down phase to be honest as i said i need to put this on speakers but um you're getting a sense of what's going on so basically in terms of a structure you've got the intro then there's a breakdown and there's like a middle section which is pretty much the same. And then we have another breakdown and then an end, which is a real kind of standard um, structure really for certain types of tunes. And um, yeah, it's coming on really well. I think it's finished. Definitely got to play it on the speakers, but uh, I wanted to sort of give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes thing going on that. Um, the electric piano is literally um, a sample that I took from the original. And I tell you, oh, this is the other thing, right? Here's a secret uh, about this, right? So here's the EP, right? Listen to this, and uh, I'll let you into a little secret. Um, I shouldn't give away this sort of stuff, right? The reason why it sounds so interesting, right, on the electric piano is, look. Let me find it. What did I do with it? I know what I've done. Um, why is it not showing there? Oh, do you know what? I've got a feeling that I just froze it afterwards. Oh, damn, that's a shame. Um, I'll tell you what I did to create that keyboard riff. Let me see if I can find at least one of these. Oh, no, I did my subtractive structure trick where I took everything out to eight bars and basically bounced it out. Um, I used transpose pitch on the clip, so the original electric piano. Um, I basically just moved it up in steps, up and down. So look, I'm sorry I can't show you the secret there properly, um, but trust me, that's what I did. So I bounced out the electric piano from the original mix, went in there and did those transposes up and down at different points. I'm going to have to try and do a separate video about this, but I've run out of time. Um, so look, um, let me try and find a, an old project at some point, and then I'll show you guys how I did that, right? So that's it for the moment. And uh, yeah, I'll be putting the track out, um, maybe myself, or I've got a couple of labels interested in it, so I'll see what happens.